Good morning. Good morning. It is blessed. Another blessed Sunday. Amen. We are here Facebook Live. We're in the cyber world. Amen. We're on the platform of Facebook, our social media, and we're going to have an awesome time uh, in the Lord this morning. Good morning. Come on in. I'm waiting for you to come in as we come before the Lord with a word this morning. As we come before the Lord to be blessed by the word, good morning. I'm excited. I hope you are. I'm excited every Sunday morning uh, to come together with you, Facebook Live. And we are here on our conference call as well. So we have two uh, things going this morning to get the word out to you. Uh, shout a good morning to me to let me know that you are coming on, that you are prepared for the word today. Amen. God is so good. He is so worthy to be praised. So come in. I am going to wait another minute and then I shall pray. Go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Because he deserved for us to worship him. And the word of God say he who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We come bearing the truth this morning, lifting up the name of Jesus. Again, Facebook Live here at our virtual service. I am Pastor Delta Joyce Outley, the pastor of Abundant Life Full Gospel Outreach Church right here in Columbus, Georgia. Amen. Come in. And what I want you to do this morning again, y'all was so great. You helped me out last week. Let me know where you're calling from, where you are watching, where you're viewing from. Last week, we had Birmingham. We had uh, Prattville, Alabama. We had Auburn, Alabama. We had Atlanta, Georgia. We had Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana. We had Columbus, Georgia, of course, Smith Station. So I want you to let me know where you are calling from. If you're in the living room, just say in the living room in Columbus. Amen. We're going to start this morning in prayer, lifting up the name of Jesus, wherever you are uh, in your living room, where you're in your cars, or if you're in your family room, wherever you are watching from this morning, I believe if there's ever a time that we needed prayer, it's right now, a right now prayer, coming before God, asking God, uh, we're petitioning the Lord. We're believing God for yes and amen. That's his word. So uh, take a few minutes to pray with me. And then there is a word of help, a word of encouragement for you on this morning as well as myself. Let us pray. Our Father, uh, which art in heaven, we come to thank you, first of all, for this day. We thank you for your mercies, your grace. We thank you for brand new mercies every day. And Lord, as we come before you, we know that you are our, you are our source, you are our resource. We know that we can do nothing without you. But with you, God, all things are possible. And as we come, Father God, by a conference call, we come Facebook Live, some will watch and view later. Bless them right now, Lord. You even said to Jabez, enlarge our territory as he came before you. So today, Lord, we ask that you would enlarge our territory. And by chance, if someone's not saved and have not said yes to you, this is the day that they can say yes to you, Romans 10 and 9. If they confess with their mouth, believe in their hearts that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, they shall too be born again. So, Father, since we are born again believers, we shout glory. We shout thank you. We shout you are our God, and we love you with all our minds, our heart, and our soul. Bless the word. Bless the words out of my mouth. The word is already blessed, but let us touch. Let it touch us where we are that we can be the better. Empower us right now. All generation, Father, everybody that will tune in, watch, help them to be the best Christian they can be. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Now let me see some amens and where you're coming from, where you're watching from. God gave me a word this weekend uh, to encourage myself as well as you. 
And I want to talk this morning about how your success is a blessing to someone else. How your success is a blessing to someone else. How you being successful is a blessing to someone else because God gave it to you. The word success, again, let's define it. I've been talking about success and the success that I'm talking about. Amen. I see y'all. Amen. The success that I will be talking about today is God's success. It's measured by God's standard. And we're going to look at this young man by the name of Joseph. We're going to look at Joseph as an example that he had to go to the pit, but he made it to the palace. And somebody that's watching today or you'll watch later on, you'll see it next week. I thank God for you. But I want to let you know that you're in a place of being in the pit, perhaps. But God have a way of taking each one of us to the palace because he is not a respected person. And I'm glad about it. But I want to talk about how your success can be a blessing or should be a blessing to someone else. The word uh, success means favorable or desired uh, outcome, also attainment of wealth and favor. I want you to keep that word in the forefront of your mind, favor, favor. And Joseph, as we go to the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter number 41, Joseph is our model today or uh, how he went from the pit to the palace and his success was able to bless his entire family because he didn't quit when he was in the pit. He didn't give up when he was in a dark place. He didn't give up when he was in that dungeon in prison for something that he never did. And God was with him. So I want to remind us, I want to encourage us, no matter where you are right now, God have a way from taking you from level to level, amen, and from dimension to dimension. Go to the book of Genesis chapter uh, number 41. I'm going to give you a minute to get there. Genesis chapter 41. And I want to stop by verse 41. Genesis 41, 41. And I want to rest on verse 41 for a minute. And the Bible says in Genesis 41, 41, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, we're going to use Joseph as our example today. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. Don't it sound like a promotion for Joseph from the pit to the palace? And arrayed him with a vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Verse 43 is where I'm going to stop for a minute. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. Sound like Joseph went from the pit to the second limousine to being the vice president at 30 years old. God began to use his success. I'm going to back up so I can give you a backdrop of why I believe this sermon or, or this word this morning is a place of refreshing for you and encouragement. Here, Joseph was sold into slavery. His own brothers sold him because Joseph was a child that had a gift to interpret dreams. Listen, Joseph had a gift to interpret dreams as a little boy, a teenager, and his daddy had made him a coat of many colors. And his brothers at an early age got jealous of him and they sold him into slavery in Egypt that later on, fast forward a little bit, at 30 years old, now Joseph becomes second in command to Pharaoh. That sounds like God. He went from the pit. He was still gifted to interpret dreams. 
and he made it to the palace as second in command. Won't God do it? And God began to use Joseph even when he was in prison. And he was in prison, uh, we would say today, because of statutory rape that was not true from Potiphar's wife. The backdrop is that God allowed Joseph to go to prison and spend time in prison as an inmate that had a number. And from there, God promoted him. When Pharaoh needed someone to interpret the dream that he had, and all the others came, this is a backdrop, and, and could not interpret the dream, the butler that Joseph held in prison reminded Pharaoh there's a man 30 years old, young man in prison by the name of Joseph. And what we should do, this is a backdrop, how success allowed Joseph to come back later and help his entire family. Joseph had not shaven, and the Bible says they shaved Joseph, gave him a fresh haircut, put Joseph on some nice clothes. We need to learn how to dress for success. And I don't care what nobody say. People will judge you by the way you appear. Your appearance mean a lot when you're trying or you're in a place of success. That's a sidebar. And so Joseph got cleaned up, came before Pharaoh, now in chapter number 41. And I want to start with 51 all the way down to verse 57. Genesis 41. And our, and our message this morning will be sitting around verses 51 through 57. And it reads, and Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh. For God said, he have made me forget all my toils and all my father's house. Joseph had been estranged from his father and his mother for years because his gift got him in trouble. Because he began to tell his brothers what he saw. And at this time, he had not seen his father, his mother, nor his brothers for years because he had been in Egypt, a foreign land. And the Bible says he had a son. And to remind him, he named that son Manasseh. Manasseh meant that he would uh, forget all that he went through. Now, God have a way. Listen to me this morning. God have a way of blessing you so much so that you can forget all the trials and tribulation that you've been through because after you go through some things, there will be glory. I want y'all to shout this morning or send some hearts or send, send some lights. God have a way of blessing you so abundantly and so much favor is on our lives that you forget the troubles that you've been through in the past. Amen? And so it goes on to say in verse 40, 52, the name of the second child that Joseph had was called Ephraim. For God have called me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I know I can't stop right there because there's some more scriptures, but I just want to let you know Verse 52 says that he called that second son Ephraim because he would be fruitful in the land of his affliction. God is good, y'all. Amen. God is good that he would allow you to be fruitful in the very place that was meant to kill you, take you out, and ruin you. God is so awesome that because you are to be successful, nothing can stop you but you. Amen. And God will even move you out of the way to allow you, praise the Lord, to be fruitful in the land of affliction. Now, let me bring this 21st century style. God have a way of allowing you to be blessed with little, with less, with hardly anything. And God have anointed you 
so greatly that you would be fruitful in the place that you were supposed to fail in. My God, that's a word. God will allow you to be blessed in the very presence of your enemies. And he will anoint your head with oil and bless you because he has purposed you to be successful that you can be a blessing to someone else. What a mighty God we serve. Let, let me not get stuck right there. And then it goes on and say, verse 54, in the seven years of drought began to come according to Joseph. Joseph had said in the drought was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. My God. And when all the land of G Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, listen, Pharaoh was the man in charge. He was the government. He was sort of like the president of the United States. But listen, the instruction that Pharaoh gave the people that was in a famine. He said, go to Joseph. This is not in my notes, but it's in my spirit. There are some people that's going to have to come to you on the way to being blessed. That's not arrogance. That's not cockiness. But that's just ordained from God. They're going to go to one resource. And God's going to make them have to come to you. Amen. In the time of famine. And God's going to bless them through you. How could that be? That God's going to bless some people, not because you got a lot of money, but you got a lot of prayer. You got a lot of influence. You have a lot of wisdom. You know how to handle people. You know how to talk to people. You use your own experience. Somebody need to hear me to be a blessing to somebody else. This is a word for five of y'all this morning, include me. So six of us going to get it. You were born into your family as Joseph. And as I was praying and thinking about the word and meditating on it, some families are so blessed they got more than one Joseph. And I shout you down for that. But in some families, we're blessed to have one Joseph. And through that Joseph, it can be male or female. Don't get caught up on the name Joseph. God will cause you to be, you could quit school. You couldn't get pregnant at an early age and drop out. You could not sell drugs. You could not go to prison. You could not get strung out on substance because God had an assignment for you to be successful so that you can help somebody else. Amen. Receive that. And even if you did make a mistake or you did fall by the wayside, a just man fall this seven times. This is not an excuse. But God have a way of getting you back up and you don't look like what you've been through. This is a word, praise the Lord. You are successful because you are called to help somebody else. Amen. And the reason you know you can help somebody else, even when those family members gather and talk about you and say all oh, manner of evil against you and say you bougie, you think you better than somebody? Y'all ought to be sending some hearts up because I know it's in my family, it's in yours. And they say you think you better than somebody else, family members. And in time of need, my God, you're the first one to show up to their rescue. So Pharaoh sent the people that was in a famine, not to him. He said, go see that young man by the name of Joseph. And Joseph was able to sustain the people in Egypt during a famine. I probably won't get to my notes this morning. God is sustaining us in the time of famine, in the time of a pandemic, in a time of coronavirus, in a time of COVID-19. God is sustaining us. God is giving us blessings on top of blessings. Now, let me stop right there. What you mean? In one year, you hadn't been laid off. That's sustaining. In one year, you hadn't lost anything. In one year, you're not behind on your mortgage or your rent. 
My God, in one year, your car have not been repossessed. And in one year, God has kept your body. Amen. God has kept your mental status. He have called you. Listen, to be successful in a pandemic so you can help somebody else. Y'all can shout me down later. God will keep you if, the word is if, conditional, you want to be killed. God will bless you. Well, some of you didn't have to go to work. Now, this is profound. And you work from home and got the same pay. Some of you didn't have to go to the office. And your supervisor and your director and upper management found out you could do the job from home and get the same pay in your pajamas. Woo, what a mighty God. You didn't have to leave the house. Amen. Because God sustained you. And God sustaining you right now. Somebody shout right now. He's a way maker. Y'all say that stuff. He's a miracle worker. He's a provider. And if God be for you, my God, who can be against you? Because God's very name is at stake. Let's read these last verses. And now God goes on, the Bible goes on to say, <coughs> and when all the land of Egypt was in famine and finished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all of them, go to Joseph. What he said to you, he said, do it. Whatever Joseph tell you to do in the time of famine, do it. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all oh, the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptian and the famine went sore in the land of Egypt. It wasn't just a little time. It wasn't just a little famine. It was a severe, very severe famine. And Joseph had already given Pharaoh and the other officer, listen to me, a strategy as well as a plan through the dream, y'all listen to me, that he interprets to Pharaoh that calls him to be successful and the second in charge of all of Egypt. God have somebody in your life woo, with a plan and a strategy that's going to sustain the entire family in the time of famine in a lean season. You might not like them. They may not talk to you right. You may not understand. But God will give certain people the strategy and the plan to sustain us when there's a famine. Last verse. And all countries came unto Egypt. Oh, everybody. Everybody had to come to Joseph. My God. The same young man <clears throat> that was in prison. They had to, everybody had to come through this boy, Joseph. The one that they talked about by saying, you know, Joseph was accused of raping Potiphar's wife. That's why he down in county. That's why he's in a state prison. That's why he's in the dungeon. Because he was accused falsely, but ended up going to the palace by way of the pit. Somebody that's on this line today, somebody that's watching Facebook Live, you have gone through some things, and you shall go through some things, but God is using, hear me, that very thing to have people that have to come to you when nobody else will help them. And verse 57, verse 57 says, and all, that means everybody, all the country came into Egypt to Joseph, the one who was in prison, in a dungeon, to buy corn because there was nobody else that had corn but Egypt. And Joseph 
was over the distribution center. Here we go. He was over the storehouse. I just read it. He was over the storehouse. That sounds familiar. He was over the storehouse that had corn to sustain them. And when they came, Joseph was able to sell them the corn. Hey, Amen. This is good, y'all. You are successful by God's standard, not man, not for yourself, but you may be a blessing to others. Joseph is our modern day example of how to become successful. I'm just about done. And, and, and how to be a blessing to somebody else when you're successful. Amen. Y'all shout me down. Let me see if you're still here. God called Joseph to be able to assist the people when Egypt and all the other countries was in a famine. God calls Joseph, this is it, his brother sold him and he had to go to Egypt and he was doing good, not even though he wasn't with his family and, and, and they sold him, went back home, this is the backdrop, told a lie that the animals had eaten the brother Joseph. And, and so here we are finding him estranged from his family, got accused of raping Potiphar's wife, and went to prison. But in the end, he assisted, he blessed, and others, somebody else got a benefit from him becoming second in command. Woo, what a word. You today say I, I, me. I am a now day Joseph. My God, that's the word. That's all I had this morning. You are a 21st century Joseph. And if you can't uh, uh, comprehend the word Joseph, say I'm a modern day Josephine. But whatever name you want to give me, I am blessed as Joseph is, to be a blessing. I was ordained. I want you to get it because man and society have told us we can't be successful. I don't care how much education you get. It is God that's give promotion. Promotion does not come from man. I want you to hear me. You can work 90 hours a week. Your paycheck, God Almighty, does not make you successful. Because I was told a long time ago when I was a little girl, and I'm a grown full woman now, a money and a fool will soon depart. Because a fool with money still make him a fool or make her a fool. Your money does not make us successful, nor do your education. It's the grace of God. It's the power of God. It's the wisdom of God. That will cause you to be successful and obtain favor. I'm about done. Amen. Because I'm getting real excited right here. You are a now day. I want you to rehearse that. 21st century. 2021. You and I are now day. Joseph. I want you to go. Pull your coat of many colors out the closet. Try it on. Yes, Lord. Let somebody know your daddy made a coat for you. It's a coat called favor. Amen. And everybody can't wear your coat. And everybody can't surround you. And everybody can't get in your ear gate and speak to you. But the Bible says that everybody, y'all read your Bible, had to come to Joseph. And when Joseph interpreted the dream to Pharaoh earlier, he told him, he said, listen, Mr. Pharaoh, woo, y'all, this good. He said, that your dream means this. This is what I'm going to tell you about your dream. He said, for seven years, that's going to be plenty. That's going to be abundance. Everybody going to be balling. Everybody going to have some money. Kind of like tax season and stimulus coming together. Amen. And, and God will allow them to have seven years of plenty. Amen. And then 
there will be seven years of famine. And Joseph was able to tell Pharaoh, God's going to use a man or woman uh, uh, to let the government know what's really going to happen. You can have all the programs you want, but God got an anointed man or woman of God. I feel the power of the Lord, y'all, on the backside. I don't care if you're six, 16, or 69. God's going to use you to be a blessing, not only to you or yourself, but to the government. If you have your ears to the mouth of God, Lord have mercy, God's going to use that little pastor from Columbus, Georgia, amen, Phoenix City, Alabama, Fort Mitchell, that nobody thinks nothing of right now. And God have anointed them, not, not nobody already on the platform or somebody already made it. God's going to use his people in the 21st century to be able to speak to the crisis. Lord have mercy, I feel you. We're in a crisis and God will use who he want to use to get the message to the right people. And even though Joseph was in the dungeon, in the pit, he was able to interpret the dream. He said, look, Mr. Pharaoh, I just want to get out of jail. I want to get out of prison. I want to be able to not have a probation officer. I just need to be free to be able to use the gift God gave to me. And I want to let you know, there will be seven years of, of plenteous and folks going to be balling out of control and doing their thing. But then, Mr. President, Mr. Pharaoh, there's going to be seven years of famine. Woo, Lord. And that's going to be nothing, but we're going to strategize. Somebody on this, on this uh, Facebook Live today or the conference call, you need to start strategizing right now for the next seven years. Seven years, how you going to educate your children? Seven years of how you're going to pay for their college degree. Seven years of putting them in business. Seven years of paying your debt off. That's prophetic, somebody. Seven years of getting a home on favor when your credit is towed up from the floor or you got good credit and still can't get a home. Amen. Begin to strategize and plan and put it before the Lord and watch the Lord do Ephesians 3 and 20. He's going to do exceeding abundantly what we can ask or think. Now I'm getting excited. God did not bring us through all of this stuff not to bless us in the end. Lord, I hear you. God is going to bless you, but I want to warn you, slow down, slow down. This is not just for you only. It's for you and others. And I'm going to I'm gonna get off Facebook this morning because I'm getting too excited. God is going to bless you so much that you're going to become the storehouse. Mm. You will become the overflow. You will become, yeah, you, the distribution center. You will be blessed in this hour to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. And you won't have to not pay your bills. To be, you won't have to fake it till you make it. You'll really be able to bless somebody through your strategy and your plan. And let me tell you, investment is not the devil. Go ahead and invest right now. That's fresh. Go ahead and put your money in a money market account, Wall Street, whatever you need to do. That's strategizing your money for the lean years that's going to come. And Joseph told Mr. Pharaoh, and we will be able to sustain the people. Now, this got me last night when I was studying. He said, this is the strategy. We're going to take one-fifth. Somebody say one-fifth of all the taxes in the year of abundance. He gave him a strategy. And we're going to store up. We will store up the taxes because when the lean years hit, when the lean years and the famine come, we'll have more than enough. We'll have more than enough. Somebody shout, we'll have more than enough. We'll have more clothes than we can wear. We'll have more food. We won't have to go to the food bank. We won't have to get in line. 
We won't have to beg and borrow. We won't have to ask the government for funds. We'll already be in position to have it. I've used none of my notes today, and that's okay, but I want to get this word out to you. You are successful not only for yourself, but for somebody else. You are the Joseph. I know you don't like it at times. You wonder why everybody in the family lean on you, come to you, and you need a break. You need some, quote, me time. Well, God have a way of blessing you to help sustain others. And the more that you give out, the more he pours back into you. Everybody always want to call you and talk. Everybody want to tell you what's going on in the family. But I'm here to let you know, you are the chosen one. You are the Joseph. You are the modern day Joseph. And the more you're blessed. Now, let's, let's run to the end part. And, and I'll preach this on next Sunday. And after Joseph had to sustain the people, his biggest test came. His pivotal moment came when his own family that sold him into slavery, his brothers appeared before him and they needed food. Joseph could have easily, his flesh could have easily told him, don't feed them, but let them starve because they're the very one that sold you into slavery at the age of 17 years old. And you had to go through some adversities. You had to go through some things in life because of their demise. But instead of Joseph, I want you to hear me good this morning. Instead of Joseph getting even, Joseph fed them. Joseph sustained them. Joseph said to them, and I want you to hear me because you got to look at it from another posture. As he fed them, got a chance to see his family again. He began to say to his very own family, this is the biggest test. Not being in prison was his biggest test. Not being accused of rape was not his biggest test. His biggest test, his most pivotal moment, was when he saw his family and they had a need. My God. Joseph said to the family, come in, you guys, all my brothers, my dad and mom, y'all didn't know they sold me and told you I was dead. But I want to announce I'm second in command now. I ride in the second limousine and with a broken heart, but an obedient spirit, Lord have mercy. This is for somebody today. Joseph uttered out his mouth what you meant for bad long time ago. God meant it for good. As you go into this next season in our lives, we got to get rid of I'm going to get even with them. I can show them better than I can tell them. Your blessing is caught up and entangled with being obedient. When you could get even, let God handle this. Amen. Your success will speak for itself. You don't have to write a resume. You'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. And Joseph bore good fruit, had a better life than he ever had. In the year of famine, the severe famine, when he had to give his family corn, Lord have mercy, with everything in him, brother Joseph, he blessed his family. I may not be talking to anybody this morning, but I want to leave you today. God is going to use you to be a blessing, not only to yours, but to others. And what they meant for your bad, God will mean it for your good. Amen, amen, and amen. I want you to meditate on this scripture, this word today, because it's not just another sermon to say I was on Facebook Live, I was on the conference call. You're going to have to use this in days ahead. Amen. And I hear the Spirit saying, 
all the money, all the houses and land. When you leave this earth, my brothers and sisters, you can't take any of it with you. You won't be able to bury that house, the furniture, the cars, nor your bank account. What you do now for God will last. So go ahead and be a blessing to the very one that tried to cause you to fall in a ditch. And I've been told by old people, I don't know if it's true. While you're digging one ditch, you might want to dig two. Because the one you digging for me just might be for you. Be careful how you handle God's men and women and the anointed, the anointed ones that call, God is called to be Joseph in times like this. I want to bless you today with a word of encouragement, a word of prayer, a reminder that abundant life <clears throat> will be back in the building whoop, whoop, next Sunday at 10 a.m. and as well as Easter Sunday morning, where he got up with all power in his hand at the 10 o'clock hour. And on that very weekend, it's a special day. I get to celebrate another birthday on April the 3rd. And there will be a drive through celebration. Come on out, drive through, wave, love on your woman of God, your pastor, your leader. As we come to celebrate another year on earth, we serve a mighty God. I want to bless you today as I leave with a word. Don't let the enemy trick you to think that you are insignificant. You are very significant. Don't let the enemy trick you that everybody else is blessed and you're not blessed. Don't let the enemy trick you, my brothers and sisters, to think that God is finished with you. No way. God is not finished with you. He still has much work for you and for myself to do. And I want you to work while this day because night cometh and no man will be able to work. Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And as I end every Facebook live, I don't want us coming together to be in vain. If you're not saved, amen, and you're watching or somebody around you is watching, amen, and they're not saved. I'm not talking about church member. Uh, I do Facebook live, conference call, streaming live. I'm talking about a personal relationship with my God. Today is the day, Joseph, that you get saved. Even though a lot of people don't even know they have gifts and talents and they're successful, God still have his hands on them. He has his hands on us. And if you're here today, you want to be saved, just say yes to the Lord. Accept him in your heart. Believe that he sent his son and his son rolls uh, with power in his hand. You're born again. Secondly, if you're here and you've gotten away from God, I just don't understand how you're making it, but that's you and your God. Come back to the Lord today. Get back in position with the Lord. Accept them in your heart again. Let go of the bitterness and the anger and the disappointment and come back to God. And you can be a prodigal son or daughter, giving your life back to God today. Thirdly, I don't understand how you do the third thing. You need to be covered. You need a church family. You need a church home. You need somewhere to call family. Amen. A place where you are accountable and the pastor is a part of your life and you're a part of the pastor's life. Come to a church family. Find a church family and get connected right there. I'm going to leave as I always do with a word of prayer. You can lift your hands. You can get on your knees. You can even walk around, whatever it is, but you're successful. And you're not successful just for yourself. There's a generation, a generational blessing on your life. All you have to do is sow it, share it, distribute it, and make sure that you're being a blessing to someone else. At this time, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We love you with everything in us. This word have not fallen on deaf ears or deaf grounds or barren ground. 
but your word has fallen on good ground. And he who have an ears, let him hear, hallelujah, what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And we are the church. Help us to be better, Father. Help us to be intentional. Help us to understand and embrace our success right now. Help us to be better wives, husbands, children, grandchildren, better citizens in our city and in our country. Oh, God, we commit everything to you, even our government right now, God, even every plan and strategy. We give it to you right now. Oh, God, we love you so much because you first loved us. We thank you so much because you do so many great things in our lives and nobody get the glory but you, Father. We thank you that even when we sin and fall short of your glory, we can ask for forgiveness and you're faithful and quick to forgive us of our sin. We thank you, Lord. Now bless us in Facebook land. Bless us on the conference call. Bless us, oh God, as we come and go. Because if we ever needed you, dear God, it's right now. Continue to grant us favor, Lord. Continue to let us open up our mouths and bless your holy name. For you are great, oh God, and greatly to be praised. I thank you for every person. I thank you for those that will listen at a later time. That they too will be blessed by the word of God. We thank you that we are Joseph right now in a land of famine. And we give you praise for sustaining us and keeping us, dear God. Bless us everywhere we go. Everywhere the sole of our feet tread upon, we possess the land. To you be the glory. Open doors that no man can shut. Shut doors that no man can open. Grant us favor on top of favor. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody that's on Facebook, go ahead and shout me down by saying amen. Amen, amen. Send some hearts out. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week at the campus, but we will be Facebook Live as well. I love you. You're successful. And nobody can do anything about it. You're successful. Yes, you are. You are successful. Walk in your success in 2021. Y'all have a blessed Sunday. Enjoy this spring day. Uh, don't let the pollen overtake you, but enjoy what the Lord has done. Y'all have a blessed day. Amen.